The American dream, having enough money to move to Mexico. You wanna open a business in Mexico, restaurant, nightclub, off-road biking, a storage company, a boutique hotel, a spa or massage parlor, buying assets and turning them into a business, English teaching school, weddings, private chefs. What else is just as good as weddings? They're pets. Welcome. So you wanna open a business in Mexico. You wanna open a business in Cabo San Lucas, in Cancun, in Puerto Vallarta, in Mexico City, wherever it is. I got some business ideas for you guys. I got some really good ones at the very end of the video, but I'm gonna start with the ones that are so-so, and I'm gonna finish with the really good bangers at the end. All right, thank you for joining me. Brandon Kessler, BK Cabo. I put out a new video every single week about Mexico, Cabo San Lucas, basically everything to do with Mexico. So here we go. So of course in Mexico, starting a business is just like any other country. If you watched my last video, how do you get a job in Mexico and what are the best jobs you can do in Mexico? I'll put a little link right here. I explained really all the different steps that you need to take to start working in Mexico and all of the best jobs for foreigners. But in this video, we're going to talk about all of the different businesses and all of the different business ideas that you have here in Mexico. And the cool thing about opening a business in Mexico is you definitely have some advantages. One, labor costs a lot lower. Taxes typically lower than America, Canada, obviously a lot of the European countries, Scandinavian countries. A lot of people actually move from Europe to Mexico to start a business simply because it is very advantageous to open a business here in Mexico. Number one on the list, number one on the list, let's open up a restaurant. Yeah! This is the idea that everybody has, everybody starts and everybody fails. I think it's one in 19 will fail within the first year, 4% will fail within the next five years. Now that's standard in America, I believe. In Mexico, I believe your chances of success are a lot higher. And again, that has a lot to do with the lower cost of the employees and the lower cost of really everything. Your overhead in general is gonna be a lot lower. I myself used to own a restaurant in Washington State. Would never, ever, 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 ever do it again. Horrible, horrible, horrible business. It's an excellent way to throw away a lot of money. That being said, I have considered a small bar here in Cabo San Lucas just because I see the way that things are done here and you definitely can make some money here simply because those costs are much lower. I thought I was rich. I thought I was gonna be driving Lambos and I thought I was gonna be, you know, rolling in Hummers and just doing these things. And the tax bill came and the employee tax came and the employee bill came and everything came and I'm sitting there rolling around in a little Pinto wagon. No, just kidding, I had a used Mercedes. But you know what I'm saying, it wasn't brand new. I kept it clean, you know what I mean? traditional restaurant stuff, I don't like it. I actually prefer lean and mean. And people in Cabo San Lucas actually like when you can bring them something, okay? Now also other parts of Mexico as well. So I really like these food service businesses. That means like a healthy eating business, you know, food in a box, meal prep. These kind of businesses I believe can do very well in Mexico, especially depending which area you're in. When I used to live in Playa del Carmen, everybody's fit there. You have vegan, restaurants, health food restaurants, all along Fifth Avenue. If you have a food service business, which actually I used to use one, those can do very well. Of course, like anything, you gotta have your marketing on point, you gotta have your, you know, everything on point, but that is an excellent business idea, a food prep business. Next up, nightclub. Now this can be a little bit sketchy or a little bit more edgy, depending where you're at in Mexico, because a lot of the nightclubs can have a bit of a rougher crowd. That being said, there are some spots kind of on the outer skirts. If you were to open a bar that was catering towards an older crowd, that is something that I would recommend. A sports bar, something 
to that nature. I wouldn't really go into a giant hip hop nightclub and try to open that up. You're just looking for a lot of trouble. You're gonna have a lot of fights. You're gonna have a lot of nightmares like I used to have in my old club, which we called Roadhouse Part Two. <laughs> Me and my dad, we actually had a nightclub own for about five years. And we did the math on how many fights we had been in and it ranged to, we'll call it 250 fights. Yeah, the police tried to shut us down. <laughs> it was a bit of a mess. Never in my life do I want to go back to that again. Never do I want to wrestle around with guys. But a very older, more mature crowd here, you can make a lot of money again. The employee costs are low. The cost to rent a building are low. Actually, I have a friend right now that has a bar for sale in prime location. He's had it for a very long time and he's just ready to move on and do other things. This has a extremely long track record of uh, success. I mean, if you guys are interested in something like that, we're talking a 10 year business and actually the price that he wants, basically two to three years and you've made back all your money and it's all profit from there. Send me a DM if you're interested in something like that. We're talking less than so anything that you are a specialist in, let's say you're very good at off-road biking or mountain bike riding, you can actually turn that into a tour. And now you can actually use Airbnb to help you with that as well. So you could buy yourself five or six off-road bikes, you turn that into a tour, you charge a hundred bucks a person, and you take them through cool trails in Cabo San Lucas. Now with just six bikes, you've created a business, you've created a, a nice job for yourself, you get somebody else to manage that business for you, and now actually you've created a business instead of a job because a lot of people do create businesses, businesses where really in reality they've created jobs for themselves. We can get into that a little bit more later, but this video is gonna be really just about ideas in which you could open a business here in Mexico. This next one up is honestly really good. I don't care what city you're in, in America or wherever. Again, I like to stay lean and mean and have very little overhead. So a storage company. If you're in Mexico City, you have 20 million people who live in Mexico City. I don't know the exact number. I should look it up. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments. When these people move out of a house, guess what? They need somewhere to put their stuff. So a storage company is an awesome business. I don't care what city you're in. If you have a storage locker that you're charging $100 a month for and you have 100 of those, well, you've got $10,000 a month that's coming in pretty much passive because you don't really need to do anything. You're simply, you gotta have one person there to let people in or it's all automated with locks and cameras, but a storage company can be an awesome business. You're in Mexico and I say that in Cabo because we don't have a lot of that here in Cabo. Hey, open yourself up a storage company or a, uh, a place like that. You're probably gonna make some cash, baby. Next up, a boutique hotel. You can make a lot of money here with Airbnbs. In fact, I had a friend in Playa del Carmen. He had 176 something properties. Damn, this guy is rich. Well, what I didn't realize is that these are not his properties. What he would do is he would actually find good deals on renting properties and then he would Airbnb them out. For example, he would find a property, 10,000 peso per month property, and then he would rent it out for 1,000 pesos a night. And if he gets a 66.6% .6 average, he's now making a 10,000 peso a month profit. He's got one, then he gets two, then he gets three. And the great part about this sort of business strategy is you really have no risk. If the people burn down the damn house, you're okay because all you have into that property is your deposit because you're renting it and you're releasing it. Of course, you have to ask, you know, if you can do that, if you can have the option to, you know, release the property, a lot of people will do it. So there's a lot of people making a killing with this in the States and here in Mexico. Cabo San Lucas, a little more difficult here simply because the rent rates are a bit higher. I've ran the numbers on it. It wasn't as, as good of a business as it was per se in Playa del Carmen or Tulum because these are places where you could rent a very cheap little house, do a little bitty remodel, make it look cute, and then rent it for a much higher premium. Okay, a spa or massage parlor. There's tons of these all throughout Mexico, all throughout Southeast Asia, all throughout everywhere. Well, why is that? It's because they make money. They have very little overhead. The employees work off of consignment or they make a percentage of what they do. You typically have to either pay for a room or they have to give a percentage. For example, if you have a bad month, you're not really out a ton in wages. 
your employees aren't going to have the best month, but you're still going to be fine as a business owner. So a massage parlor, or we can just move right into that, a barber shop, nail salon where girls get their nails done, a hair studio, anything like this where really you're just renting spaces or paying a commission on what you bring in is an excellent business idea. Again, especially here in Mexico where labor costs are a lot less and where the employees rely a lot more on tips. I'm not saying you shouldn't pay your employees good. I mean, I really truly believe that you should pay your employees what they deserve. But again, it's gonna be a lot different than in America where you have to pay a crappy employee the same as you would pay a good employee. That's what I don't like about the States. One of the reasons why I live in Mexico because hey, it's a little bit more of a actual capitalist state. All right, next up, buying assets and turning them into a business. There's so many people in all of the different beach cities all along Mexico that buy jet skis. Well, why do they buy jet skis? Because you can buy a jet ski for, let's just call it $5,000. And then you rent it for $100 a half an hour or $100 an hour. Basically, you've got your ROI back in a month and now you've got a free jet ski that you're just renting the heck out of it it's just profit baby so a lot of people do that with jet skis with atvs side by sides you basically buy an asset whether it's a scooter or a jet ski you rent that thing out typically it pays itself off in a very short period of time and then it's all cake, baby. We just eating that cake, baby. All right, next up, of course, this is really gonna depend on your area, things like that. Here in Cabo San Lucas, we're a very big art city, even more so in San Jose, but opening up an art gallery or any sort of handmade crafts, these actually can do quite well in Mexico. People love to come to Mexico and buy something that was made in Mexico. A lot of stuff made in Mexico actually was made in but you get what I'm saying. So anything like that can do very well here. English teaching school. I'm not a big fan of brick and mortar anymore simply because you don't need to pay for a school, but it's people do it and it can still be profitable. So opening up an English school or a Spanish school or something like that, people do like to get out of their house, especially older people, they wanna get out of their house, they wanna go into a classroom and really they just wanna learn about the culture or learn about a language. And now if you can make this fun and interesting, that's where you can make a good profit. You make this not just about the language, but about the culture, about the community. Some sort of business like this could do very well in Mexico. All right, next up, weddings. Weddings, 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 weddings. Weddings, people don't give a When it comes to weddings, they will pay whatever it is. If you can get into any kind of business, into weddings, you can do well for yourself. For example, being a wedding planner. What is a wedding planner anyways? I have no idea. Like you just tell people to walk down the aisle and DJ. Play, the, play that funky music, white boy. You know what I mean? Like, what is a wedding planner? I don't know. Put some blue flowers here and the red ones there. And put a, put a, make that, that girl's dress is too long. We're trying to look hot, make it shorter. And, and tell those guys to stop acting like idiots. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what a wedding planner does, but I guarantee you they make good money. Number two, wedding photographer or videographer. It's a lot of my friends, a lot of the guys you see behind the, the camera, hobby one, hobby two. A lot of times those guys can't come and film my videos because they're out shooting damn weddings because the weddings pay the most money. That being said, <laughs> you know, you can make a lot of money, whatever it is, wedding related. Any business that's around that is a good business. Moving back up to the wedding DJ. Wedding DJs, if you have a production company and do something again around weddings, you can charge a massive premium. Again, people don't give a Okay, if you are an awesome, awesome, awesome cook, or you have people that are, people like private chefs, especially in these tourist communities, you can do very well if you are really good, but you gotta be good. In that case, 
people here, of course, in Cabo San Lucas, where we have million dollar, super bajillion dollar mansions, people will pay a high premium to have you come there and to cater for their party, for their event, again, for the wedding, anything like that, sort of a catering business can do very well here in Mexico and really probably anywhere but definitely here in Mexico. Okay, this next one on my list is very cool. I would pay for this myself. Before I tell you this, guys, remember it does, it takes a long time to make these videos. I'm doing this after I've done showings. I'm doing this, you know, sometimes, you know, 12 o'clock at night when I'm exhausted and I'm just trying to give you guys good information. I'm not asking for anything in return. Just hit the like and subscribe and post a little comment. Let me know what videos you guys would like for me to do next. Next up, just like weddings are here, what else is just as good as weddings or what else do people love more than anything? They're pets. Myself, I love my little Lolita Frita, even though she's being a little lazy bum. What are you doing? You're supposed to be being cute for the camera. A dog grooming company, a dog grooming business would do well. Also a doggy daycare a doggy hotel. Okay, I had to, you know, took a little trip. Basically the first time I've left Cabo here in about two years, I guess. I mean, just being away from my dog for three days, like I didn't know what to do. So I had to have my friends stay here, take care of my dog, you know, feed her, make sure she's okay, make sure she's getting walked. People love their animals and they will, again, pay a premium. So a doggy daycare or a doggy fun center could kill it really in any place, but definitely here in Mexico, definitely here in Cabo San Lucas. Moving on from that, a very simple business would be a pet walking service. I honestly would pay for this sometimes because I just don't have the time. Um, she pooped on me. So she has a fractured spine. I got her from the street and she does, she gives me these. These are brown nuggets. Oh, doesn't smell good either. Okay, jumping back to that there, what was I saying? Dog walking and that kind of reminds me too. So where I got Lola was from PET. PET is a nonprofit organization that helps animals. They spade and neuter thousands of animals every single year. They also help animals get shipped back to Canada and they just do a ton for the community. So if you would like to open up a nonprofit organization, obviously you can still pay yourself a wage. You can still make a living, but a nonprofit organization in Mexico is awesome. There's a, a couple that I work with. PET is one of them. Uh, Casa Hogart is another one. Casa Hogart helps the orphans and of course pet helps the spade and neuter all the dogs. So that is an awesome business and I really truly believe in giving back. So if you guys want to come to Mexico and open up a nonprofit, that, that would be awesome. Of course, if anybody wants any sort of information about how you can help with that too, you can send me a message and I can for sure put you in touch with Aida. She is the, the owner of Pet or the, I don't know if she's the owner, director, something like that of Pet. She most definitely can use the help if you wanna go down and just volunteer to help you know, with the, the spading and the neutering and really with any other thing like that, or if you wanna help to fly animals back to Canada. So they love that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next one.